Peace family, this is your boy Gerald. It is the 3rd of January, 2018. How are you doing today? You're halfway through your work week and I hope you're well. I know for those of us that are on the East Coast, we're preparing uh, for this winter uh, freeze that's gonna roll up the East Coast. If you're out and about or have to go out, please be safe. Um, if not for yourself, those people that truly love you and want you the same way that you left out. They want your presence. They need you around. Be aware of your surroundings when you're out and about today because there's going to be black ice. I know here in Virginia Beach, they've already projected that we should start to see the uh, snow right around about one o'clock, which is also right around the time that I start my day. And um, so, you know, just be careful. Now, all right, now it's the beginning of your new year. And some of you have already made the emotional switch. Some of you are putting your proverbial, proverbial pinky toe in your choices, while there are others that are choosing to more or less, I don't want to say uh, be strategic with it, but they are still wrestling with the aspect of making choices that are long overdue and i'm here to to just give validation that if you just do that just at a minimum give yourself at least six months you will see a drastic change you will actually see things that may not have been apparent to you as well as finally have the reassurance that you rightfully deserve. And what I'm talking about family is being emotionally happy. It does not matter what is outside your door if you are not emotionally prepared within yourself first. You won't be prepared for whatever that's gonna come and be placed before you if you do not have that mindset, you do understand family that your mentality is what makes your reality. Did you hear what I said? Your mindset is what sets up everything that is manifested in your life from where you work at, from the people that you interact with, the highs and the lows. But let's talk about those lows. You know, there are people that actually believe that they are, their whole existence is to fulfill a generational curse. That everything about their disposition, there's no blessing there which I totally, I totally agree to one thing. What I agree upon is the moment that you acknowledge what is your challenge, half the work is already done because you're acknowledging what is present. But because the fact that the moment that you took your first breath, if God did not love you, first of all, you wouldn't be here. The second thing is, he already gave you what you already needed, but that means you've got to acknowledge what is present to tap into it. That means that beautiful mind. You realize we only use 6% of our brain. You realize that, right? And if you didn't realize how powerful that 6% is, why do you think there's so much distractors placed in your environment from the things that are projected on your TV to the things that are pumped into your ear from the things 
that are reflected through behavior and interactions of the people that you come in contact with. Why? You ever wonder why? It's because misery loves company. So you got to make a choice. You got to bear with me, family, because, of course, the devil's work is never done. And what you can't see is that my, there you go, my uh, antivirus is doing this thing behind the scenes because I'm recording on my laptop. So 2018 should be your get at you. 2018, you should be totally inhibited from choices that you may have felt like, well, you know what? I think I might want to go this direction. Well, guess what? If that direction will spawn growth that will enhance not only who you are, what's keeping you from it? Did you hear what I'm saying? If the choices that you are making spawn growth, not reactionary, what was intended, what's keeping you from it? Let's, let's, let's have that dialogue between you and I. Because from my point of view, you're blessed. You're supposed to have the best life ever. I'm not going to sit up here and feed you this illusion. Because let's, let's be honest. Life is not easy. There are going to be moments that are going to be trying. There are going to be moments that it feels like you're not moving at all. And then they're going to be sprinkled above that. Opportunities for joy, bliss, serenity, but most importantly, peace. Now, here's the sad thing. Now more than ever, there is a social narrative to just condone. Yeah, I take note. I see what's going on, but that's none of my business. So I'm just going to act like I ain't see it. Don't even matter if there was hypothetically a truck just mowed down your neighbor. You're going to act like you didn't see it. You know, well, there's a fact there. That's trauma. And right now, socially, there's so much trauma and bad behavior being pushed out there is the narrative. A lot of people have come to a place of, well, that's just the way it is. No, it's not. It's only that way if you choose to accept it. It's only that way if you choose to not question it, critically think. Now, here's the thing. You always hear people talk about New Year's resolutions, right? You hear that all the time. But how can you have a New Year's resolution if you do not choose to have a new you? And to have a new you, that means you have to entertain a new perspective. So, for example, I heard something that was so far-fetched this morning, but it's been echoing as long as I can remember because you have some people that actually believe that there is no good people for a healthy relationship. You may hear guys say, oh, all women, they lie. They're treacherous and want to use all disrespectful terms. Or you may hear women say, well, all men are dogs. You know, they lie and then they lay. And that's just, there's the catch is not, there's no catches out there. But that's all an illusion because in both examples, you never hear this. Well, the people that I have entertained and considered companions 
I made bad choices. There's no, why is it there no accountability for the people that you choose to connect with? Because then therefore, then you would have to admit to yourself that you made a choice that was not in your best interest. Why is that? Why is it the fact that we will have, the, we will embrace the fantasy, then look at the reality? Oh, well, he looks a certain way. Um, he can't enhance my growth, but I know what I'll do. I'll change him and try to be strategic, and you end up having to pick up the pieces. Some of you end up literally having to pick up your clothes. It is your responsibility to protect your life, but govern your happiness. But none of that can happen until you're able to be honest with yourself. For those several years, I've echoed to you, Queen, to stop looking for your mate. Hoping that some of the kings out there would take note. And see, that's the problem socially. We want to go and seek out things before we seek inside ourselves. Because it goes back to this. No one can do anything to you, you won't allow. Let me run that back again. No one can do to you what you won't allow. But it's also our responsibility to teach people how we want to be treated. Did you hear me? I can't expect someone to love me if I'm not loving myself. So therefore, that means I need to be transparent with my feelings. I have to be vulnerable with myself before I can understand what communication skills I need to establish a dialogue. You don't understand that there are those people that like to gain more than invest. We, we know that. That ain't nothing new. We want the prize, but we don't want to work for the reward. Maybe this may be the reason you may be in a season where you're not dating anybody. You may be in a season where on a economic perspective, you've got it all together. But on an emotional, uh, on an emotional level, you feel void. Just like there's a, there's a narrative going on with some of the, some of the women, they think, well, you know what? On the outside, I'll look a certain way. The presentation economically i've got i've got what i need and then i'm going to add the cornerstone i'm going to add the man in my life only to risk your livelihood only to put your emotional stability at risk only to feel disenfranchised because what was needed before all of that was for you to have a connection with yourself first. Who am I talking to? So we do all this running around. We do all this reinvention, but we do not invest in knowledge of self. Why? You too bored to be you? You really think it's just 
You got it together. But yet, in the midnight hour, you feel a certain kind of way. You feel a certain kind of longing. You feel a certain kind of emptiness. But the truth is still there. The truth is, you cannot have what you long for because what you long for is not authentic. That's why Johnny ain't calling you. That's why you ain't seen Sarah since the holidays. And maybe it may be because of the fact that the person that you should have been seeking or checking for was a person in the mirror the whole time. Who am I talking to? It's easy, family, to point fingers about what other people are doing but hypocritical when you won't take stock on what you need to do. You know, I heard someone say one time, he said, you know, it's funny that people want to make excuses about the failures of their relationship, even though the glue is the communication. But the truth of the matter is, if you take stock of who you are, would you date you? Most people will run right past that. So truthfully, would you date you in the state that you're in? Some people will put their ego in front of that. Some people will try to overthink it and say what is the celebrated answer, knowing that that is a lie. Because if the truth was to ever come out, you wouldn't be able to lift your head up. If people were able to see who you really were behind closed doors, they would realize that those are two different. The person on the outside is not the person in the inside. And a lot of times there, that is really the contradiction because you have a person emotionally trying to live two lives when outside they're extroverted, but inside they're introverted and they're trying to find the common denominator between the two. Ultimately, you are juggling and you are also ransoming your emotions at the lowest bidder. So the outcome will always be the same until you decide to see the priority that was always there. And that's you. See, you can tell them what you want them to hear. But only the select few will earn the right to know your story. They'll know it before you have to say it. They'll feel it. They'll celebrate it. They'll support it. You know why? Because we are what we attract, family. So if your little girlfriends... Every time you turn around and all they do is, is swim and drum and you don't see that that is not your cup of tea, it's because that's the mindset that you keep. If you are in a situation where if you are the type that you feel that it stimulates you to have drama, co conflict, in your day-to-day, -day, it's because you have conflict deep inside you. You actually have some people that actually believe that if there's no drama, there's no love. Who told you that? Ah, I, I know why. Because that was the example probably that your parents had. And you were raised in that, and you think that's the norm, but it is not. No different than you see the hundreds of thousands of beautiful women that willfully display themselves 
on social media, thinking that that will find Mr. Right, only to attract Mr. Right now. That's right. Some of y'all may be in a relationship. And in the back of your mind, you're saying, when is my last name going to change? Well, let me tell you something. If he doesn't have a relationship with God first, I'm sad. I'm sorry to tell you, he will never have the relationship for you. That's the truth. Because he doesn't have a relationship with himself. And if he doesn't have a relationship with himself, he's going to always be lukewarm when it comes to you. And then the things that need to be discussed, he's going to skirt away from it because emotionally he's not been taught what a man should do, needs to do. It's no excuse. You know, some people say, well, maybe, Gerald, he didn't have his come to Jesus moment, Gerald, and, and now he wants to get right. You know, that's really a slap in the face because your moment with God is every morning you wake up. So truthfully, the question should be this. When are you ready to change your life? When are you ready? Don't have the disposition of, I'm just going to have the narrative you know, I'm going to say all this stuff, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to apply to it. I'm just one ear and, well, what do you think your reality has been showing you? It's a validation of everything you ain't doing. And I'm not making light to that because you deserve to be emotionally safe. You do understand that your companion, the one that God has for you, Oh, they are a breath of fresh air for sure. They are also the keeper, but the key that's going to unlock the other side of your life. And no, it's not found between your legs. It's not found in his pocket. It's not found in what he's driving or what you possess. It's found in your spirit. So just as they said, God is never when you is never there when you want him, but he's there when you need him. When are you going to be there for you? Because as long as you keep making excuses, as long as you keep making concessions, as long as you choose to hold yourself emotionally hostage, Don't think about no resolutions. Don't. You're only fooling yourself. But I'm optimistic because I know that you rightfully deserve to have all your dreams made a reality. But you got to want it more than me. I got to live my life. And I'm doing just that. And I'm going to keep praying for the intended ear the intended heart, the intended mind for somebody. Because some of y'all might not even realize that you may be even, you might not even realize that you might be living with what we call Stockholm Syndrome. And what, what Stockholm Syndrome is, is basically you're falling in love with the bad girl or the bad guy. And you come to accept, well, that's just how, that's just who they are. That's just what it is, and that's just the way it's going to be. Yeah, until you decide to wake up. When you decide to take accountability for yourself. Because if you put that responsibility on that person, it'll never get done. 
actually what will end up happening is you'll keep getting drained, mind, body, and soul. Maybe that's why some of you feel that the relationship you have has been loveless for countless time and you've forgotten when the last time you genuinely smiled or the opposite. Oh, you want to heal the situation? Buy them a gift. No, how about you be yourself? Love yourself more. And the worst thing you can do is this. Because I heard this, this bull. Well, I'm just sticking around for the kids because, you know, they're too young. But you're teaching them to be just like you. Because you won't have the courage to fix your problems. How about speak your truth? How about acknowledge your wrongs and change them? What about that? What about that? Hmm? As long as that elephant is in the room, proverbially, you are holding yourself hostage. But the worst thing you can do is think, well, I'll just, I'll just find me another adventure and try to put yourself into someone else's life thinking it's going to better yours. You know you're depleting yourself, right? You're also taking on their, their demonic spirits too. Their DNA. You know every person that you lay with, their DNA is inside you. You know that, right? Listen up, King. There's more at stake than a bump on your stuff. That's what soul ties do. And some of y'all may know what I'm talking about because you can remember a day before your life changed, before they came into it, and you're like, you know, I was right here. You know, I got with you. Listen. Don't fall prey to what is socially accepted. You are the exception. You are the experience. Just as I mentioned in Christmas, the greatest gift you could ever bestow a person is having the ability to watch you grow. Can't put a price on that. You'll never find that in a store. And that's what possession is all about, control. So who's controlling you? If you don't control you. Now, some people are going to find offense to it. Don't be offended if I'm speaking the truth. You already know what you needed to do. And when you get tired of running from yourself and just stop, take note where you've been. Take note everybody that's been in your life and take note why they ain't there. What was the dynamic? And I guarantee you, other than you being the common denominator, you see a lot of common denominators that repeated themselves. It's spiritual family. You can't see that? But you got some people say, well, nah, girl, I don't want to, I don't want to date no black guys no more because black men are dogs. Uh, let me tell you something. I don't care if you came from Bangladesh or Shanghai. Deceit is deceit. And guess what? Just as many women do the same. Because there's a lot of women that think, well, you know what? I can't beat them. Might as well join them. I put my emotional face paint on. Keep them distracted over here while I'm thinking over there. You realize how many people are in relationships today. But their hearts are over there. Hmm? We've even gotten socially 
comfortable with using the term the term cuffing season cuffing season you don't know what cuffing season is that's when you choose to put your put your body in time for ransom to somebody through the winter months and then when the thaw comes you thaw them away too That's so disrespectful to you. And you can't expect your forever to come into your life if you're not prepared. And this is the thing that online dating won't tell you. Because keep in mind, online websites, dating, number one priority is to make money off. It's to make money off your emotions. You do know that, right? You do know that, right? All it does is give you access to a wider amount of folks that same that share the same perspective as you. I ain't gotta tell you. There's many, many stories out there of disappointment. But you know what you don't hear? This word right here, I, I did this. I didn't do that. I overlooked, overlooked that. Why? Well, that means you gotta be vulnerable to admit to yourself. You put yourself there. So you're not supposed to find heaven in the arms of a stranger. Only the one that's blessed to earn the right to hear you breathe. God's praying for you. You know I am. I see your work. And for that, for that, for that, it helps me discern mine. Somebody today worrying about who's sliding in their DMs when they need to slide back into themselves. Be yourself and find your price. You may realize you were blessed all along. Have a good day. Peace.